The podlings, or pod people as they were originally known, first appeared during the Age of Harmony, Thra's second age, and became native to the Scarith region. They were much shorter than the Gelfling and had round faces shaped like potatoes, tridactyl feet, and small inner holes for ears. They were passive, humble, good-natured, and well-natured, and in many ways, one of the most essential parts of Thra's history and existence. Podlings were agrarian rural creatures, spending their entire lives tending to their farms. Harvesting crops and various fruits, vegetables, herbs, and special pod plants, using their massive seeds to construct homes. Aside from gardening, they also learned to domesticate an animal called the nebri, utilizing it to collect milk and create various food products such as cheese. They also used its skin for making drums and the rich fur around its ears and face to fashion basic fabric clothing and hats. During this Age of Harmony, which was their most prosperous time, they maintained a very close relationship with the Gelfling, with both races learning each other's languages, trading goods and crops, as well as sharing farming knowledge. They had no system of writing or records, instead relying on the changes of seasons and crops to keep track of time. They were also extreme pacifists, never killing any creature besides crystal bats of course, and even domesticating the Fizgig to guard their farms, which they acquired through animal soul speaking, the art of taming wild creatures. An interesting piece of podling history speaks of a time when an expedition of podling pioneers set out to colonize a section of land beyond the Silver Sea, but to their shock, they were all swallowed up by a gigantic sea monster known as Mondo Levidian. Surprisingly, this actually created a brand new race of podlings called Boblings, as they were able to survive and live quite well inside of the creature's intestinal tract for a very long time. In fact, Madra Marin's mother once journeyed inside of this giant creature to bestow gifts upon these beings. Despite their vicious rule, the podlings were relatively unaffected by the Skeksis, except for one event which occurred precisely at the time the Skeksis cracked the crystal. After the great split, and the resulting damage to the crystal, a massive earthquake rocked the entire podling village of Noi, which was, at the time, the home and sanctuary of the podling's leader, Hakmina. The resulting seismic shift heavily damaged the village and killed Hakmina in the process. Even so, the podlings thrived and went on to live very peaceful lives as farmers and gardeners, and over time, even developed a keen interest in playing various instruments, trading through a form of their own currency, and brewing very intoxicating, specialized drinks. They found change to be a ridiculous concept, instead learning to adhere to their cyclical cycle of seasons, and a majority of them did not take hygiene seriously, to the point of freely wallowing through the mud and having no care for bathing or cleanliness. This distinctive trait remained all the way through the late Age of Division, and because of the new systems of hierarchy, the Skeksis and Gelfling both developed a pity toward this race, seeing them as filthy, low, uncivilized creatures. That is, all except for the Spriton, who valued and learned from their farming skills, even keeping many close to their village to learn and assist with their own knowledge of crops. But unfortunately, after the Gelfling extinction and the Gartham raids, they were the Skeksis' main targets, taking them back to the castle to be drained and turned into ghost-like slaves. Although they were the lesser beings of Thra, pieces of their history and mythology speak to more intelligent minds. For instance, the Podlings believed that the three sons were brothers who had once fought over the Daughter of the Moon. But out of grief for their love and power, she drowned herself, and every great conjunction or every 1,000 trine, the sons would battle with each other. Such a beautiful piece of poetic mythology. So the next time you should encounter a podling on your travels, 
remember to think not of the dirt, funny appearances, and babbling language. Be mindful that underneath each potato-shaped head is a rich, important history that speaks volumes to the world of Thra, just like all of the others.